Hi dancers, welcome back to my channel today. I'm Claudia Dean and today we're joined here with Hannah. Hannah's just 13 years of age and trains at the dance company in Brisbane. You'll all recognise Hannah from previous tutorials that I have done in the past. However, today we're doing another exciting tutorial on how to master a ponche in the centre. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel and let's get straight into it, Hannah. Tip number one. Firstly, I'd actually recommend you watch the turnout tutorial that I have released and I'll link this below because I'm about to talk about how you should be standing on your supporting leg and which muscles you should be using. So this is featured in my turnout tutorial and the exercise is called the flamingo. Okay, now Hannah, if you can just face the corner for me and just do a tendu derriere, the first tip I have for you for your ponche is to make sure that this inside thigh, so here, this part of the knee, the back of the knee there, and the calf are rotating around to face the audience that way. That's good. So you're really trying to rotate. And you know my flamingo exercise, so the flamingo exercise really encourages you to do this. Tip number two. Now, when you're standing in this position, Hannah, I want you to lift your leg into arabesque and basically feel that both of your hips, including your left one, are over the top of that big toe. If you don't do this, you'll probably find that you'll want to fall towards the leg that's lifting up. So it's really good in that tonic position. If you transfer now, that's it, and then lift up into arabesque. Good, so when you go down to the ponche, you're going to keep that same weight placement, so you're keeping over. So that's just about the weight placement to make sure you're nice and centered when we go down. Tip number three. Now, I really believe that your supporting leg, so in this case, it's our right leg, the hamstring on that side needs to be really strong because when you're going down for your ponche, you want to ensure that that hamstring can really hold you in place. So I'm going to show you now an exercise which really increases the strength at the backs of the legs and in the hamstrings. Okay, now Hannah, you're gonna hop on all fours for me and I want you to make sure that the arms and the legs, they're both at 90 degrees. So you're on a 90 degree angle, that way, perfect. Okay, you probably come back a little bit, see the legs? Yes, that's it. Okay, now you're gonna lift up this right leg, once again, to another 90 degree angle, so about there. Now, keeping it really parallel, all I want you to do now is lift the leg up, so squeeze, 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 and keep it parallel. Yes, and then go back down, good, and again, go. Keep it parallel, good, and then go down, it's pretty hard, isn't it? Go again, keep it parallel, good, and then back down, one more time, go. That's it, and now back down, fabulous. Okay, now relax. So you can really feel that in the hamstring, right? Yeah. Now, what I'm gonna try and do is probably around about 20, and then reps, and you could probably do another 20, okay? So two reps of 20 would be great on both legs, just to make sure they're both really strong for your ponches. Tip number four. Now, Hannah, this one focuses on your right side. So you know how in tip number two, I went over your weight placement, and I spoke about both hips needing to be over your right supporting leg. So if you face the mirror for me, now basically, as you lift up the leg, one thing I want you to imagine is that there's a zip up, zoop, just on the right side. Purely because the minute your leg lifts, just naturally, we usually want to bend the opposite way. Obviously, that's sort of what our body just wants to do. So instead, I want you to feel a zipper up this side. So that's it. Now put your arms in the first arabesque. Now lift up the leg and feel the zip up. Good. And feel the zip up on the whole way down. Now Hannah, this tip, I'm going to focus on what this right arm is doing because this right arm is actually your anchor. So if it sort of goes off like this, it is zigzag, most likely you won't hold the ponche. Whereas if you can, as you go down the ponche with the leg, this arm is going to follow right the way down in a complete straight line and then do a complete straight line all the way back up. I always say the best thing to imagine is imagine there's a string attached from the ceiling all the way down to the floor and basically the arm is just going to stay in line with that string all the way down and then line up with the string all the way back up. So just try that again for me. So string. That's it. Perfect. Now string 
bring them way back up. Good. Fabulous. Tip number six. Now this tip, I'm just gonna talk about the supporting leg. So with tip number one, I spoke about what muscles should be engaged. Now the next tip I have for you is basically talking about when you are standing in your supporting leg, I think most dancers, they think that that leg has to be at 180 degrees, so it has to be flat. But in this case, I mean, ponches are hard enough. I actually would say you're much better off for stability reasons. You're much better off slightly turning it in not too much, I'll show you how much in a second, slightly turning it in so that you can really control the ponche on the way down and on the way back up. I've done so many solos on stage where, you know, the first thing I've had to do, like Queen of the Willies in Giselle, the first thing you have to do is a ponche on stage. And I can definitely say that all the coaches that I had, they said, Claudia, don't worry about having that foot 180 degrees. Everybody's looking at the top leg anyway. You wanna try and just have control over the underneath the supporting leg and then just really focus on the top leg. Now Hannah, with the supporting leg, obviously this is parallel. This is 180 degrees. For your ponches and to achieve a really clean ponche, I want your supporting leg to be about here, but I want you to be engaging all of these muscles like we spoke about earlier. That's it. Tip number seven. Now, I'm gonna be right back because I'm just gonna get the bar. Hello. <laughs> okay, now, Hannah, that was lovely. So, we're going to, basically, I want you to stand on that side of the bar where you are, and I want you to put your pinky finger on the bar. All right, and you're gonna face the audience that way. That's it, so you're gonna put your pinky finger like that. Good, now the reason why I say pinky finger is because I believe that if you go back to the bar and practice the basics of the ponche here first, it's gonna be much easier to transfer it in the center. And I think if you were to use your whole hand, we'd probably grip on it a little bit. So if we just place that lightly, and now all I want you to do is practice the ponche here. Good, that's it, perfect. And I mean, you could practice that over and over. So in the center, if you find that they're not quite working or your balance isn't quite right, taking it back to the bar and just using the pinky finger is the best way to regain it. Tip number eight. For this tip, Hannah, I'm gonna be talking about how you recover from the ponche. So you've done a nice controlled ponche all the way down. Now to recover, I actually always say that you should try and quicken this up a little bit, just because the balance can quite easily go off here. So if you do a ponche like this all the way down, and then you're gonna do quick recover, like that, so you regain all of that much faster. I would recommend that on stage or in solos, anything like that, I would definitely make sure you do a quick recover. Okay, do you wanna try one? Yes. Yeah, quicker. Good, perfect. Now dancers, we're going to watch Hannah perform a perfect ponche with all those tips. Good, beautiful. Now dancers, I hope you learned a lot today and it was great showing Hannah all these techniques and as you can see, they work wonderfully for her. So I'm sure they work wonderfully for you. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and we'll see you in the next video.